Okay, so welcome to this video. In this video, I'm going to be upgrading or attempting to this stone laptop. This is an NT310-H laptop, Haswell based, and I'm going to be changing the existing processor, which is an Intel Celeron at 2 GHz, and installing this Intel Core i5-4210M that I've purchased from eBay. Now, before completing or attempting to upgrade the CPU uh, on a laptop or any other machine really, you should update the BIOS to the latest version. Now I've made a video already updating this exact laptop to the latest BIOS. All you need is a USB stick and I'll put a link to that video in the description and I'll also put a link up here in the corner that you can click on. But make sure you update the BIOS first, otherwise any other processors may not work in it at all. So, as you can see, currently we've got a Celeron in here and I'm going to shut this thing down. We're going to get it taken apart and change the processor, which is actually quite an easy task on this laptop. Okay, so once your laptop is shut down, remove the charger and anything else you have connected, turn it over and remove the battery. To remove the battery on this particular model, what you do is turn it over, unlock the clip there and unlock the clip here and push the battery out, like so. And that's removed now. Put that out of the way because you don't need that for the moment. Turn the laptop back over and now what we're going to do is hold the power button for about 5 or 10 seconds just to remove any left charge within it so it's totally dead. That should be enough. Now, for this machine, everything other than the hard drive is under this door, the memory, the SSD, etc. Here is where the hard drive is stored if you want to get to that. In my case, we're doing the processor right now. So I'm going to undo the four screws that hold this big door on. You'll want a small size Phillips screwdriver. Okay, so with the four screws removed from here, here, here and here, you now need to put your fingernail or other object in here, of which I haven't got any at the moment. So a small flat screwdriver or something would also fit the bill. So you need to put it in here. Just be careful not to stab or slip into it. All you want to do is put it under and twist a little bit. Just enough to get your fingers under and pull the flap up. The door should come off like so. Now we can see all the guts of the laptop. So the processor that we want to work on is right here. And it's actually really easy to change on this machine. You just undo three screws, fold the heatsink out of the way undo this one torque screw here and then take out the old processor and drop the new one in. So I'm going to start by taking out these three screws on the processor cooler. Note that they've got numbers 1, 2 and 3. I'm going to start with 1 when removing them and work our way up to 3. Beware that these are not magnetic screws either so try not to lose them inside the laptop otherwise you will have a bad time. That's also the reason that we removed the battery and completely discharged the motherboard. Okay, so with those three screws out, I'm going to lift up the heatsink here. Now it will be a little stuck because this thermal compound paste on it that lets the heat transfer. And you may get a little bit stuck on the fan here, that's okay, just give it a little bit of a jiggle and it should come out. And then this can be put to one side for the moment. We'll also have to clean this paste off. So at this point, what we can do is before we remove the old processor, we can clean it if you want to. I would recommend cleaning them in the laptop before you remove them because there's less chance of damaging the pins that way whilst it is secure in place. So for cleaning, all you're going to need is a piece of tissue paper or something similar. And you can actually just wipe it with the tissue paper and it may just come off on some chips. Like you can see that's made a difference it's gone shiny but if you've got some or can get hold of some isopropyl alcohol works great rubbing alcohol the higher percentage the better preferably 99% just put a little bit on the tissue and that'll just help to remove the thermal compound effortlessly may come off in some chunks so just keep folding your tissue around. 
Okay, so once the CPU is nice and clean, and I've even dried it with this tissue, you can remove that from the socket. In this case, it's a Torx screw on the socket, and it is a T8 fitting. And what we do is just put the screwdriver in to the screw there, and turn it. You can see it's got this little black arm. Turn it all the way around. Don't force it, just be gentle with it. And the chip will now be loose, and we can just lift that out. As you can see one thing to pay attention to is to note where this little golden triangle is because that should be pointing to a triangle on the socket or a mark and this is the way that we need to put the new processor into the socket it must go in the right way so here is the new processor the i5 that I've purchased from eBay and Note that the old processor and the new one, this one's a bit dirty, this does need a clean as well. But note that they've both got that triangle. We're going to align the triangle up again. And just make, don't force, don't push, but just stand it on top and move it around until it drops in, as you can see it just did. You should not need to apply any force to this, it should just go in of its own free will. When it's sat in, you can just feel around the edges, make sure that it's sat level, hold your fingers on, not pushing just holding them there to keep it in place and tighten the screw up again and you'll see when it goes back to that position that the processor is now secure into the socket. That's the scary bit over, remember to put your old processor somewhere safe so the pins don't get bent on it. Okay so now the new processor is in We've got to clean the processor that we've just put in and also the heatsink before we put it back on. Then we're going to apply new thermal compound or paste, which is what lets the heat come from the processor into the heatsink or cooler. I'm going to do this exactly the same way as before with a piece of toilet tissue and isopropyl alcohol. So we can see that that's going nice and shiny. There's also these couple of little marks on the processor here, uh, which you can try and clean off. Yours probably won't have them. I think this has had a sticker on it from the person that sold it. But it does not matter. The piece that we need to clean is just the shiny bit on the top there, where the heat's carried away from the chip. So that is ready now. As you can see, it's nice and shiny. So then we're going to clean the heat sink itself, which is here. And we want to get this paste off. So a bit more isopropyl alcohol again. And I'm just going to wipe over it to free it all. This may take a little bit more force than the processor. But you can see it's breaking it up in big chunks. It's important to clear the old stuff off and put new one. Otherwise the processor would overheat and wouldn't make proper contact with the cooler. Okay, so I've cleaned most of that off there. You can see there's still some sort of stains and marks. I'm just going to get a fresh piece of tissue. And give it another wipe over. Without any isopropyl alcohol around on this time. And just have a look if there's anything still coming off. There's a little bit on there still. So just rub it a couple of times. You'll very rarely get these spotlessly clean. It's just the nature of it. But I'm happy with that now. There's not really much coming off. And then we can repaste and reapply this. So, for applying paste, sometimes it comes in a packet, sometimes it comes in a syringe. It depends where you buy it from and how much you buy. This is a rather large syringe, just cheap stuff from eBay. And I'm going to apply a splodge of this in the middle. You don't want to apply too much and you don't want to apply too little. You want a reasonable amount for the size of the chip. With a laptop, it requires less because you're only covering the actual die, that piece in the middle. With a computer, you would be covering a whole piece of metal across the top of the processor. Laptops don't have that. So just a small splodge like that would normally do. If you put too much on, it shouldn't be a problem. It just means that it will spread out onto these areas here of the processor itself it's normally not conductive it shouldn't be conductive this paste so it shouldn't cause any issues so when you've got the paste on 
what you're going to want to do now is re-hinging the cooler tucking it down there and then down like that and then you want to sort of before you drop this down visually line it up with the holes from above and get it sort of in place and it'll be squishy and moving the screws will spread the paste don't push on it get the screws for the cooler and then we're going to start with number one and we'll put number one in but don't put it in all the way just put it in enough so it latches see how I've left that up there and I'm going to put the other two in and then we'll tighten them all together so number two next like so and then number three okay so I'm gonna now they're all in loose go back to number one and tighten that all the way up we'll then do number two and then number three so those are all in tight now what that's done as we've tightened it is that has spread the paste and filled in any uneven surfaces which is why you don't press it and force it down these arms here are sort of like springs and apply just the right pressure onto the chip for you so now we're going to try the processor so what i'm going to do is put the cover back on the bottom so you want to look for these little tabs that stick out on one side you can also tell by the shape of the cover where it's rounded it will fit rounded parts of the chassis so we're going to tuck the bottom in first and then just push the edges around working our way up and it'll all click in next thing we can put those screws back in once the screws are in we can reinstall the battery which will just click into place as before and then make sure that both of these catches are set to the locked position then we'll plug in the power and let's see if this thing works Yeah, that's a good sign. We're going to hit F2, get into the BIOS. Oh, it started loading Windows, so I'm just going to force power it off. Oh, wow, it actually already loaded up. That was incredibly fast. I just want to get into the BIOS. So I'm going to keep pressing F2. There we go. So we can see, we've got Intel Core i5. 4210M CPU at 2.6 GHz. So, brilliant, that's detected and working. Let's uh, start up into Windows. So, there we go, we're within Windows. Uh, so, we'll look in the control panel and system. You can see there, Core i5 CPU at 2.6, 2.6, and in Task Manager. Under performance, when it loads, there we go. i5 4210M at 2.6 gigahertz. All four cores there. So, jobs are good. Next thing that I'm going to do with this, which is going to be probably another video, is changing the mechanical hard drive that's in it out for a solid state drive. So, I've got a M SATA SSD here, a 240 gigabyte Kingston one. This is not NVMe, this is a SATA M SATA as it's called and that's what this laptop requires so uh, have a look out on my channel or I'll put a link up here for it for the video installing this and obviously I hope you enjoyed this and found it helpful if you're upgrading your laptop and it goes successfully or you have any issues let me know in the uh, comments down below leave a like if you found this video helpful any questions put them in the comment section down below or any feedback or if you've done this process let me know down below as well and get subscribed to my channel for future random technology videos just like this one. Thanks for watching.